Hello and welcome to Phillies Post Game Live. I am your host, Chris, along with Ari and, and Max. So we're going to be talking about the Philadelphia Phillies beating the Arizona Diamondbacks last night. And how did it feel for your hometown team uh, to win last night? Well, I think it felt better because uh, on Monday, game one of the series, they kind of blew it with their bullpen. And last night they cleaned it up better. Pavetta pitched better, and I think it was better. I, mean, I think uh, Ari and I agree that having Nishek close out the game last night was a better decision. I agree. Nishek is a very good closer. Um, though, first, how crazy is it that someone can bunt a home run? Cesar Hernandez did it last night for Philly, and how do you feel about it? Well, what happened was, you know, there was two errors on the play. One to throw into first. I think he would have been safe anyway. And another one throwing to third, which, you know, it took a while to get the ball. They threw it back in, and that was a terrible throw. So, in reality, he would, I think he may have actually been out. So, it, it, I think, I'm not sure if even it's an RBI, but it's pretty impressive to see the D-backs, you know, fail that badly. And if, if they do that, you know, more often than not, they're, 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 they're postseason contenders, and I think they will make the postseason. But if they keep doing that, they're not going to be very good uh, in the postseason yeah. this year. I do kind of agree. I do think that the Diamondbacks have potential to go to the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to go very far, though. That's the one thing yeah, I agree. that I'm worried about. Um, uh, yeah, so the Phillies, they, they report that 10 players have picked up the flu, including Aaron Nola, Reese Hoskins, and Michael Franco. Oh how do you feel about that? That's our season probably right there. If they're going to be out for more than a week, uh, especially Hoskins and Franco being so big parts of the line, but now Nola is arguably one of the favorites to win the Cy Young. So it's kind of a bit crazy that this is all happening. All happened way too soon. Yeah. Hopefully, the, you know, the flu can sometimes last, you know, a couple of days. It can sometimes last a couple of weeks. So depending on, it's really going to depend on, you know, the symptoms, you know, how long they're out for. You know, hopefully they can, they, they can all, I think Nola is probably safer because he's only playing, you know, once every five days. But the other guys, uh, you know, they're playing every day. So they're going to need to call up, you know, an entire AAA team, like an entire AAA lineup. So... Yeah. It's not going to be good, but maybe they can pick it up later in September if, if they're out for that long. But it, if that happens, the Braves might overtake them. Yes. That is a problem because 10 Phillies are now out. Unbelievable. They're out of the lineup for two weeks with the flu. That is, yeah, that's bad. Uh, from Sports Broadcasting Camps, this has been Chris. And Max. And Ari. And I will see you guys in the next in the next Phillies post game live here we are Lakers Warriors Christmas Day this game was insane we are here with Sage Crawford Ethan Klein Charlie Brady and Caleb Weiss so it was 108 107 Warriors Curry had 35 points Durant had 27 and Lonzo Ball with the triple double 17, 17 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists. How do you feel about the Warriors and Lakers today? You know, I thought this was a pretty impressive game played on both sides. Uh, I thought the Lakers made their shots late game, especially when JaVale McGee came up clutch with a couple of those nice dunks. Um, you know, I thought LeBron played pretty well also. You know, uh, he really found his teammates well. What about you, Charlie? Yeah, I think Steph Curry did really well in this game, getting 35 points, uh, lots of three, lots of clutch three pointers. He really does well in these close games. Um, the Lakers also did really well, as you said, Javale McGee getting those dunks. Um, but I really thought Draymond shut down LeBron. So, yeah, uh, how about you, Caleb? Well, I actually have some very interesting news. Um, apparently, KD says he's interested in Lakers trade at the deadline. Um, I don't really know how I feel about this. I mean, I feel like if KD comes to the Lakers, plays with LeBron on this up-and-coming team, I think they can easily beat the Warriors. What do you guys think about this? Yeah, I think that's true. Kevin Durant has proven that he's one of the best players of this generation. Paired with LeBron, the best player in the world, that is going to be a deadly duo if this trade happens at the deadline. You know, I feel like people have called it a long time ago, ever since he first made the 
the signing with the Warriors, he hasn't been the most loyal to teams, so I can't see him. I, I can't see him. I can't see him being too loyal to the Warriors. What do you think, Charlie? Um, yeah, the Warriors. I, uh, I think lots of the other players like Steph Curry and Demarcus Cousins are sealing his spotlight. Uh, I think he wants to be on a team that uh, he could be one of the stars. And of course, with LeBron James, he might want to move again. But yeah, I I could see him on the Lakers doing really well. Yeah. There you go. That's for a post game show. Thank you and good night. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Los Angeles Dodgers Live. I am here with Ryan Struxma and Nicholas Bear. And we're going to talk about last night's game against the Oakland Athletics. First off, Ryan, how was their pitching last night? Well, I thought Rich Hill, the starter of the night, I thought he pitched very well. He pitched just over five innings, only given up three hits and two earned runs, which was enough for his fifth win, so he's now over 500 with a 5-4 and four record. I feel very confident in his pitching in the future. And yet again, Kenley Jansen receives a save. It's his 32nd of the year. And this time it was a two-run save in the ninth with only one innings pitch, and that's what he's good for, and that's why we have him. All right, great. Thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to move on to the hitting aspect. But last night, the Dodgers, as I was looking at uh, stats, Yasiel Puig went two for four last night. How did this impact the game? Well, I think the biggest impact of the game was the fact that the Dodgers were able to get going right, off the right out of the first inning. Uh, they got a ground ball by Kike Hernandez to score a run, and the Dodgers did not hit, hit a home run last night in their win, which I thought was key because the Dodgers have been heavily reliant on the home run this year. And for, for them to be able to create all their runs is a bigger key than hidden home runs. Very well said. Thank you so much. Uh, from Los Angeles, Dodgers Stadium, we are here live. Again, my name is Dylan Dayton, and I'm here with my partners. Nicholas Bear. Ryan Struxma. That's going to be all for us tonight, signing off. Hope you oh. enjoy the game. I got some big news coming in right now, guys. So I have just received word that the Dodgers have acquired Max Scherzer and Bryce Harper for Rich Hill and top prospects in a blockbuster, blockbuster post waiver deadline deal. Oh my God! Wow, that's incredible. Seems like we're getting a little more for our buck there, right? Huh? That's insane. How in the world did that happen, Rich? For one pitcher, you got one of the greatest hitters in the league and possibly the best pitcher in baseball. How did that happen? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we got pretty lucky with our trade deals, made some smart decisions, opened up some cap space. I feel like our future is now looking a lot better than it was before. What do you think? Yeah, well, I definitely do think so. On the pitching side, the Dodgers definitely did get a better pitcher in Max Scherzer. I think Bryce Harper is having a down year, so hopefully coming to the Dodgers to change the scenery is the best for him because maybe he may not stay in Washington. So I think a change of scenery is good for him, but we'll see how that works out for Bryce Harper. How do you think this is going to influence the fans? This is the last question, by the way. How do you guys think that this new pitching and hitting core is going to influence the Los Angeles culture, how it's going to influence the team, the rest of the players, the coaching staff? This is just such a big deal. Well, more energy in the ballpark for the postseason overall just for the Dodgers because their pitching kind of burned out in the World Series where they struggled uh, towards the end in Game 7 with Yu Darvish starting over Clayton Kershaw. That's what prevented them from winning their first World Series since 1988. So I think Max Scherzer coming to the team is going to make a huge, huge difference with the pitching. And Bryce Harper, that can be a big change of all time. Well, you've heard it here now. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, we're over here at the stadium waiting for the next game tomorrow against the Oakland Athletics. I am so excited. This is great. For more news, check out us, check out us online uh, and radio. All right, thank you so much. Have a great night. Hey, guys. Welcome to Jaguars Live Post Game Show. I'm Jack Smudine here with my guests Chandra and Chris. And we are here in Pittsburgh, and we just saw the Jacksonville Jaguars upset the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now they move on to Foxborough to play the New England Patriots. Chandra, what do you think about how the Jaguars really thought they didn't have a chance, but how do you think they beat the Steelers here today? I think they had a great chance because they, they played some good defense and they had some good offense, but their defense I think carried the team the whole way, in my opinion. And Chris, how do you think they fare against probably the best quarterback of all time, Tom Brady, with their vaulted number one defense in the league? Well, you know with the Jaguars, you can trust that the defense is going to show up, but the issue is can Blake Bortles 
play well enough to keep them in the game to the point where they can end up winning. That's all. I agree with you, Chris. I think the defense is going to have to do a lot of work alongside Leonard Fournette because the Jaguars have been without Allen Robinson ever since the first game of the season. And Chris, do you have anything to add about that? Uh, no, I, th I agree with you there, but I just received some breaking news that says Le'Veon Bell has said he, he just played his last game as a Steeler. So I guess that means this offseason that he's going to be looking to switch teams. Uh, I don't know. I wonder what team he's looking at. Where do you think he's going to go? I'm thinking he's going to go to a team with a lot of cap space that's willing to give him the deal that he's obviously been bugging the Steelers about for almost ever since the contract talks begun. What do you think, Chandra? I think it's a place that he needs to go that's going to get, like you said, the money and just want to win now maybe. I mean, the Steelers aren't going to be paying that much money anymore, so maybe he'll go somewhere like Jacksonville or somewhere like Colts or even back to uh, maybe to the, the Patriots. Uh, you don't know. So we'll see. Just first thinking, I'm actually really liking the Browns here because there's no more Isaiah Crowell. And, yes, they just drafted Nick Chubb, but who better to teach Nick Chubb how to play than Le'Veon Bell? He's one of the best in the position, and he's set to be one of the best running backs in the league. He's parallel to Todd Gurley, and I think – who really do well with the young running back from Georgia. And once again, live from Pittsburgh, see you next time in Foxborough. Hi, welcome to Speaking the Obvious. I'm your host, Skylar Takak. James Adams. Hannah Garnett. Today we'll be, be talking about the Vikings-Browns game in London. Now, Deshaun Kaiser had a very disappointing performance that game with four interceptions. What do you think about Deshaun? He's disappointing. I mean, he was a first-round grade in the draft, and he has not even close met my expectation for him. I mean, hopefully he has a good career, but he's not going to last long here in Cleveland. I agree. Very disappointing. You know, I had high hopes, but it sucks. I mean, what do you expect from a rookie? He's so young. I, I still believe that he does have potential for the next season, but we'll see where that goes. But Case Keenum... The opposing quarterback, he he did great this game. What do you think about Case Keenum's performance? He struggled early in the game, but that touchdown for Adam Thielen where he did the soccer celebration, that was fun. Then Stephon Diggs had a touchdown. Well, around the game for him, he started making a name for himself. I'm just waiting until he becomes a backup again. What do you think about Case Keenum? Excellent game. I think he was a solid player all game, and he definitely showed up. Mm -hmm. the, the Browns are traded for Kirk Cousins right now for – for Deshaun Kaiser in a first-round pick in hopes of winning a game this season. Wow, now that is an excellent improvement to their quarterback situation, their long struggle and controversy of these terrible quarterbacks. Kirk Cousin is going to be great for this organization. What do you think, Hannah? I agree. I think it'll be fun to see how everything plays out, and I have hope. Mm -hmm. I predict the future, and I think he's going to be a free agent. I think he's going to consider the Minnesota Vikings right away. So he's going to have a good couple months in Cleveland and maybe a rent department or something, and then you'll have fun once you go somewhere else. This is wonderful news for the Browns organization. Thank you so much for tuning in to Undisputed. Thank you. What's going on, guys? It's Ben Goldberg here alongside Harrison Rosenthal and Lucas Dotson. We are live here, Fox Sports West, at the Bay Area at Oracle Arena. Just got done with a post game with the Lakers and Warriors. Warriors coming off a... 125-124 win. Steph Curry out here doing it again with the three. Shooting it, splashing it, ending it. Lucas? You know what the buzz with Steph Curry coming up clutch once again? This was similar to his game winner against the Thunder back in 2016 where he pulled up from the logo once again with two seconds remaining. It was bold. He could have taken it in. He could have gotten two steps from the line, but you know Steph Curry. Anything in the gym, that's his range, so he shot it. And Anything. He made it. He made it. Anything else to add? I mean, tough game from LeBron tonight, but Golden State was kind of expected to win the game anyway, so not a surprise to see them win. Just a little bit of a tougher fashion than anyone would have expected. All right, looks like we got some breaking news in here today. Some sources close to Draymond said he's interested in deadline trade to the Lakers. Draymond Donkey Green to the Lakers alongside LeBron, Lonzo, Kuzma, and Ingram. I, that could work. I mean, Ben, I agree. It could work, but we saw what happened today. Draymond and LeBron were in each other's faces once again. You know, this happened last season when they were in the finals, 
And, you know, there's a history between them. Draymond was suspended for, you know, hitting LeBron in the place where a man should not be touched by another man. So, you know, they have a history with one another. And, you know, going to the Lakers, going to L.A. after what he's done for the Warriors, it's, it's shocking to say the least. It is very shocking. Harrison, anything else to add on that? I mean, the Lakers probably won't be able to keep their young core intact to be able to acquire Draymond. They might have to give up an Ingram or a Kuzma, maybe Hart too, or picks. I mean, the Warriors weren't going to be able to keep their core together forever, especially with how far they're going to be over the luxury tax and how much they'd be having to pay. Like, they're projected to be paying $1 billion just for their roster in a couple of years to, if they sign everyone to max deals. So they're obviously not going to be able to keep anyone, so maybe this gives them a little bit of salary relief. Yeah, and also this... I thought there would be a couple moves, you know, to break up this core. I thought KD would be the first piece to fall, you know. Kevin Durant, he came along in 2016. He was not part of this puzzle originally. But, you know, Draymond, this is a guy who they drafted back in 2011 with that 35th pick. He's been along for this ride. And actually, excuse me, 2012 was the year, not 2011. He's been along for this ride. So it's very surprising of all people. He's been the heartbeat of this team, you know. Steve Kerr called him back in 2015. He said, Draymond, this is the heartbeat of the Warriors. And, you know, he's gone. There's no more heartbeat for the Warriors. That's all we got here. Maybe the McGee-Draymond duo may come back to life here in L.A. We never know. For Fox Sports West, I'm Ben Goldberg alongside Harrison Rosenthal and Lucas Dotson. Have a good night. Hello, everybody. I'm Justin Borsas along with my colleagues. Garrett Sunderland. And Anthony Remedios. And this is game one post game of the NBA Finals, where the Cavaliers just lost to the Warriors after a very big blunder made by J.R. Smith in the final moments. Guys, let's get your thoughts on that. Um, the biggest thing for me is J.R. Smith. I mean, first, before to end a half, he let Steph Curry get a wide open three, and that gave momentum to the Warriors. And then at the end, George Hill, I mean, you've got to make your free throws, but he got the rebound and could just put it back up to win the game but he didn't know the score. I mean, the two things you need to know is the clock, how much time you have, and the score. And you, you can't just think you're tied. You can't think you're up one if you're really tied. You just gotta know. It's those are mental errors that you just can't make. Um, it's definitely a rookie mistake. Um, like, he's, like Garrett was saying, definitely need to know the score. Clock, not so much earlier on in the game, but shot clock for sure you need to know. And um, in a crucial game like that, you need to know how much time is left. Oh, there is uh, breaking news that the Cavs announced J.R. Smith has been cut. And the Warriors are interested in signing him to a 10-day deal. I think that's crazy. I mean, I know he made a mistake, but he was their starting shooting guard. He's their lockdown defender. And I know he made a huge mistake that cost him game one, but he anchors that team. And other than LeBron... They don't have that many good defenders, and he's a 3 and D guy. He can do a lot of stuff for their team, so I think that was a mistake. What do you think? Well, I think it's a dumb, it's a dumb move. He's basically the Madonna of the team, meaning that he, uh, you know, is very outspoken, can cause headaches for the team. He's not a good shooter. He bricks most of the time, and the Warriors are already loaded with star power, and Andre Iguodala picks up the defensive end with the veteran leadership that he has. So I, I disagree with the move entirely. Hopefully they cut him after 10 days and he's out of a job for a while until a more deserving team needs him. I don't know. It, for the Cavs, this may or may not be a smart move, but the, in terms of the Warriors signing him, I don't think um, it's a wise idea. They don't need him. They have Steph, Clay, Draymond, KD, um, plus Iguodala, McGee, and some of our other bench players, or some of their other bench players. I don't think they need J.O. Smith. And with that, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back in about five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. Welcome to AT&T Park, where the Houston Astros have defeated the San Francisco Giants 2-1 to one for the second consecutive night. I'm here with my partners. I'm Caleb Olson. And Jared Alley. And they're going to provide some great insight on tonight's game. Uh, so, Jared, of course, the uh, big home run in the late innings again from the Astros to save them. Yeah, unlikely hero Tyler White hit a two-run shot in the eighth inning to save the Astros. It was one nothing. The Giants' uh, pitching was cruising. And then, boom, Tyler White hit a home run. Very unlikely hero. I mean, uh, the Astros, they've had a lot of injuries lately, but they pulled out another win. 
Yeah, you mentioned the injuries. Uh, the past week and a half, six and four, uh, two consecutive wins against the San Francisco Giants in this little mini series. Uh, what do you think? What sort of direction do you think the Houston Astros are moving in, Caleb? Um, obviously, looking up, you know, contenders for the AL West. Um, Oakland five and a half games back, and it just shows how res resilient this Houston Astros ball club is. Even if people like Correa, Altuve, Springer, McCullers out. They're keeping on fighting, and I think, especially in the National League Park, it shows that more names are getting exposed for the Nash for the uh, Astros and coming through. You you mentioned the um, Oakland Athletics. Now, Jared, they're only five games out of first place, which is quite remarkable. Many people thought they were cruising for a sub 500 finish just two months ago. Do you give any Athletics? Do you give the Athletics any chance to win the division? I do. Five and a half games out, they they can come back. Well, more on Oakland and more on the Astros. Breaking news, Garrett Cole assigned for Tommy John surgery and will miss probably the rest of the season and most likely the postseason. Jared, what, do you, what effect do you think this will have on the Houston Astros uh, currently and moving into the postseason? Oh, this is devastating news. I mean, you look down the, uh, you look down the list of everyone be, uh, getting hurt. I mean, Altuve got hurt in the Dodgers series. Springer got hurt in the Dodgers series. Lance, or Altuve didn't, but McCullers, he exited from a short start in L.A. too. Uh, I mean, Charlie Morton, well, he's been on the DL this year. Uh, Correa, well, he's in a rehab start in Corpus Christi right now. But losing a top player like Garrett Cole, because here's the thing about the postseason, you need starting pitching. Without pitching, your team is shot. And Garrett Cole was having the best year of his career. First year in Houston, he had a solid career in Pittsburgh. I mean, he had 200-plus strikeouts, so it's just a very devastating loss after he's having a really good year in the, with a 2.50 ERA. So, yeah. For my partners, Caleb and Jared, I'm Shane Gravelin, sending it back to the studio. Hello and welcome. We are outside of City Field right now after the Mets defeated the Phillies 9-8. to I'm Jake Circus alongside Owen Nolan and Joey Elbaum. Jacob deGrom gave up eight earned runs tonight, but the Mets scored nine and they won that game 9-8. Uh, Owen, we've talked, a lot, we've talked a lot about Jacob deGrom and how he's had such good games, giving up less than two runs, but the Mets not giving him the run support. How do you think deGrom feels that like he finally got some support today? Well, I think he's very happy that he got the run support. Like you mentioned, he hasn't gotten any all year. Today was a tough day for him, though, giving up the eight earned runs. He got hit hard, but he battled through five innings, just enough to be in line for the win. The bullpen held on and got a good win for the Mets. Uncharacteristic start, though, by Jacob deGrom giving up eight earned runs, something that he hasn't done in quite a while. Joey, do you think this is a stretch of some things to come, or is this just DeGrom being really rusty and just not having his, uh, his I mean, game tonight? If I was Jason DeGrom, I'd uh, give up more. Jacob DeGrom, I'd give up some more runs. But, no, it's a rare occasion. We don't see this often, but it happens. Uh, and I'm excited to see if he could motivate himself from how, seeing how the Mets can score to do better. Joey, I'm going to interrupt you right there. We have some breaking news inside of ESPN right now. Um, the Mets have traded Jacob deGrom to the Yankees for Glabar Torres and some other top prospects. We'll get more word about those top prospects later on, but Glaber Torres for Jacob deGrom after he just gave up eight runs and finally got a win. Owen, take it away. Well, my initial reaction is it makes you wonder if he did something in the locker room that made the Mets quickly want to trade him. He's been a Cy Young candidate all season long, the best pitcher, not just on the Mets, but in all of Major League Baseball. They trade him away for a great young second baseman in Glaber Torres. An interesting trade. Like you said, we'll get more information out of the top prospects later, but makes you wonder what happened that made him want to trade DeGrom so quickly when a week ago at the trade deadline they did not want to trade him. You know, uh, the trade deadline was, was two weeks ago, so maybe Jacob DeGrom went through some waivers that we were not aware of. Uh, but Joey, thoughts? Yeah, this is a big update for me. Um, I'm very surprised this has happened because Jacob DeGrom has been someone who's been so consistent, ERA under two. Um, yeah, the wins aren't there, but that's because of his team. So after one bad game, everyone has it. I'm very surprised that they would trade a player like him who is – if not going to be Cy Young, definitely a runner, a, a contender for the Cy Young Award. We'll have plenty of more coverage on this breaking news later on tonight. But for all of us here at SBC, Owen Noland, Joey Elbaum, I'm Jake Circus. Good night. 
Game four of the NBA Finals has just wrapped, and the Warriors have swept the Cavs. Four nothing in the series. What What are your thoughts on the game, Sky? Is I thought Kevin Durant was very impressive in game four tonight, especially leading the Warriors to this finals victory. They made it look easy for much of the time against the Cavaliers in this series. Well, the series just went out. It, it, it was the way it was supposed to turn out. Like LeBron had no help at all whatsoever. He, after game one, he, he was just completely down, and nobody was showing up to show up, and Kevin Durant was able to deliver, and so was well as his long teammate, Steph Curry. I agree. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, everybody on the Warriors, great job. Uh, Cavaliers, sorry you lost, but that you'll always get next year. Oh, we just got breaking news. Sources close to Kevin Love say he wants to be traded in this offseason. What are your thoughts? This, that's a, a big surprise. If, if they're going to trade Kevin Love, they, it better be to a team with a good contender. Er, because he's the only help that LeBron has, if any. Uh, if LeBron decides to leave Cleveland, they, if, if they're going to try to keep Kevin Love, they have to surround him with a good, young, talent team. They can't just give him away and like, give him like with no help whatsoever. And that's what I feel Cleveland's going to do if they keep Kevin Love in the offseason. If LeBron is going to be a free agent, it could be a way if they can get some prospects or a few draft picks to speed up a rebuild if LeBron ends up leaving. Well, you you heard it here first with the with the rumors and everything. And this has been our post game report of Game Four of the Finals. Goodbye.